What's going on YouTube? My name is Alex. This is Ask the Cheese Gaming. I'm back with another spooky 16-bit Super Nintendo review for you this week. This time, I'll be taking a look at Shadowrun, which is a point-and-click action RPG game that was developed by Beam Software and published by Data East with a release date of November 1st, 1993. The Super Nintendo port for this game, which also came out on the Genesis, is based on the cyberpunk tabletop game, which has many similarities to Dungeons & Dragons, but more of a dark fantasy spin. In this game, you play as a Shadowrunner called Jake, who has been brought back to life by some magical fox thing? After your death, you've suffered from some severe amnesia, and it's your job to explore the world around you, try to talk to absolutely everybody you possibly can, and find out who killed you and why. You are a Shadowrunner who exists in the world between the worlds. And because of this, you have the power to travel through cyberspace as well as explore the world around you. Now right away, as soon as you fire up this game, you're going to notice that it's vastly different than all the other pertinent Super Nintendo RPGs on the system. That's because you use a D-pad to move a cursor around the screen to interact with things, such as opening doors, like you can see in this gameplay here, or exploring objects or trying to find items. This is also how you're able to use your attack when later on you get certain weapons. It could be a little off-putting using this point-click style because it's not compatible with the Super Nintendo mouse, but once you get the hang of it, it becomes quite enjoyable. Next, let's touch about this game's music and sound effects. Beam Software knocked it out of the park with this game's soundtrack. If you never listened to it, I highly recommend go look it up online, check it out for yourself. Likewise, all the weapons have a unique sound and are thoroughly enjoyable that just kind of help you get lost in this game's atmosphere. Where this game struggles, though, is in its sprite work. It's not that the sprite work is lack is bad in any way, it's just that it's lacking because it's such a dark fantasy game, so there's just not a ton here. But what is here is enjoyable enough, and kind of helps with the overall dark cyberpunk theme of the game. Now, I do want to make a quick note here that this game and its Genesis counterpart, while they may share the same name, are vastly different games. So, if you've played this one, or maybe if you've played the Genesis one, it's completely different than the other 16-bit system. So, please be aware of that. Now, finally, to close, a Shadow Run for the Super Nintendo worth picking up and playing today? Well, unfortunately, this game still has a hefty price tag of $63, according to price charting. So, to quote SNES Drunk, I would say, this one is worth playing any way you can. Thanks for watching, everybody, and until next time.